On the previous episode of Paint Society, we test fit our brand new MDX door and then brought it into the paint booth to give it a full paint job inside and out. Now once the door was dry, we brought it back into the shop and did the final mounting onto the MDX itself and installed all the critical components to make the door work. We'll then show you in this episode how to prep and blend paint into the adjacent panels and give it a brand new OEM finish. Now this is a transformation you're not gonna wanna miss. What's going on and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. This is part two, repairing that MDX store. Now before we pull it into the paint proof, we're gonna show you how we get it all prepped for paint, so let's get to it. And back here in the body shop, we're ready to start getting this thing all sanded down. We have it all cleaned up. I use wax and grease remover, water base, and solvent, just to make sure that we're not going to put any of the contaminants back into the surface. So. We'll start with a K600 and finish with a K800. Get this thing all sanded up. And we got it all pulled into the paint booth and we are ready to start the masking process we're gonna be painting all the way from up here anywhere we see it scuffed up we'll be painting so let's get masking We got the MDX all in the booth. Now let me tell you the best thing that's ever happened to me is using these microfiber towels. And I use them for about three or four jobs and I throw them into the washing machine with some degree degreaser and then we'll use them again. The reason why I like it is because it really picks up all that lint and it does a better job at cleaning. So when you're gonna clean, make sure you're using gloves. We don't want the fingerprint going all over the panel. And I like to get it all wet. You can see that, come in closer, see? all those bubbles this is water-based cleaner and that water-based cleaner removes contaminants from the oils from your fingers so we like to generally wipe in one direction as best as you can if you go across the panel it's not going to be a big big deal but we want to wipe them off okay and the reason why i like the water cleaner is because it gets deeper into those sand scratches right so once again we're going to go panel by panel and i'm being very very liberal with it i'm not being just a little bit here, a little bit here, I'm soaking the whole panel as if, okay, I was washing it down and then I'll wipe, okay? And again, the reason why I like these microfiber towels is because they're not getting all soggy on me, they're not getting all weird where they won't dry anymore, they keep on drying, all right? So I like to use water-based cleaner first because I feel, okay, in my opinion, that water-based cleaner sometimes can leave it a little bit streaky all right and the wax and grease remover will leave it a little bit less streaky all right and you can also use spray away glass cleaner spray away glass cleaner you can get at the store i don't recommend using windex because it has added scents in it and some of those scents can cause fish eyes and you don't want that on your panel okay so now we're going to switch it up so i'm gonna take this towel i'm not using it anymore and I have my other towel. It's gonna to be for wax and grease remover. And we'll pump it up. And wax and grease remover is gonna remove grease from contaminants from oils. Let's say a mechanic was working on his car, changing the, uh, the tire or whatever it might have been and touch the car. So you can see that this is gonna be much different. As you get in closer, you can see it almost looks like it's just been painted. And again, be liberal with it. Just don't do a spot. We wanna soak it up and then we wanna wipe it down. Okay, we wanna wipe it down. 
and you'll see that your finish is so much smoother because it's removed all those sand scratches, all that dirt out of those sand scratches. Now there's no way that you need to do it from bottom to top, there's no hidden secret. Just wipe it and get it clean. And you can see when the wax and grease remover hits it that this door definitely needs more color. It's actually in the middle here, just a little bit patchy because of coverage issues. We're now ready to tack rag it off. So I like to really open up my tack rag and I don't push down on it, okay? I just let it glide on the surface and it should be smooth because this has all been sanded clear coat, all right? So we're just generally trying to get any last debris that's landed on the surface and we're just gonna get it off using our tack rag. Now, after we do our tacking, we'll go ahead and I'll use my neutralizer. Now, this is not a needed step, okay? But it definitely helps out because the neutralizer is gonna help give us an even surface for our metallics to lay in. And yeah, this color does have a little bit of metallic in and it helps reduce the static. Next, we're gonna use clear base coat, which is essentially base coat without any pigment. And we're gonna use it more as a visual aid to see how our blend is looking. Now, when you go into your paint store, you can ask for blending additive, clear base coat, inner coat clear. They're all the same thing. And this is what your clear base coat is gonna look like. It's got a little bit of sheen. Another reason why I love clear base is because that clear on clear, when you go to put clear on the areas where you're not blending, man, that clear just gonna wanna run off. And this gives it a little bit of a grip. So when that clear hits it, it kinda holds better. Allow this to flash for a good five to six minutes if you're in a booth, maybe longer if you don't. And now we're just ready to start putting our base down. We're gonna be using that DV1 1.3, around 14 to 15 PSI. Now, a lot of you might be confused. If you've been watching Paint Society for a while, you know I used to preach putting that base coat into fresh clear base or blending additive, and that's still true. However, it's a uh, nighttime and it's cooler in the booth, probably around 80 degrees. And I would tell you, if you're running a slow reducer, you just don't need to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and just blend into this area. Our first coat is not gonna be too crazy, just getting it on. After that first coat is flashing, you can see it's getting a little bit darker. Now, what I don't recommend is keep stacking coats on top of each other because you're never gonna get coverage. The way you get coverage is by allowing this coat to dry, then putting another coat over because it creates a barrier and allows more paint to go on instead of just seeping down to the bottom. Now, could I put a couple extra coats on this when I originally painted the door off of Sandia? It probably would have helped me out a little bit more. But right now, it's blending out. I would say two more coats and it should be pretty good. Let's spray that second one. Well, we're starting to get good coverage. Now, I'm gonna tell you, looking at it, it's still gonna need maybe a coat, a coat and a half. So we're gonna do one more coat now, let it dry, take our time, and then see how it looks. We can see that our blend, we've been stopping in this area. So now we're gonna use a diagonal way of uh, blending, okay, a diagonal stroke, to just kind of lose that blend. So you just saw me go one way, now I'm gonna make like an X, you can go the other way. I just saw us do that last coat. Now, I'm gonna give it one more coat, but remember that we used that blending additive from the beginning? on our first coat, well, before our first coat. Well, we have about four ounces here and we're gonna add another four ounces 
and we're gonna do one to one here and that's just really gonna help with that last coat last coat to keep it wet and to make sure that we don't see our blend because you know how you see a blend you see a blend when it's dry spray at the edge and well we don't want that so i mean if it's not one to one it doesn't need to be a perfect sign perfect science this is kind of what i do that really helps me out so i'll go ahead i'll find uh the eight on here because we have four ounces i'll pop it in there and we are good to go so basically now it's a lot more transparent than what's in this cup let's spray that on the car and we should be good to go Now, once it's done flashing, we want to look at it with a sunlight gun. And I got to tell you, this is going to show you, is my color light? You can see here, this is what we're looking at. Does it match? Does it match? Do I have any modeling? Now, I looked at this before I recorded, and it looks good. But this is a time where you need to fix it. Do not rush and clear it. If you rush and clear it, you're going to have to sand it back down. And this is a big boy, at least for us. I don't want to sand all this back down and redo it when I can fix it right now. We're ready to clear, so let's get clearing. And we just got the MDX out of the booth. So let's go ahead and let's get it all assembled. And that's where the video is going to end. And yeah, it fell short. We have one molding that's been on back order with no date. So we're not sure when it's gonna come in, but I wanna get you the video out so you can see it. Now you guys, I hope you learned something. You can see the importance of painting the door first and then putting it on. And some of you might say, I'm not getting paid for that. Well, 
We want to make sure that it comes out good, and this is the way I do it. And everyone does it a little bit different. So if you do it a little bit different, make sure to show in the comments and tell us exactly what you do so we can all learn from you as well. Guys, if you want to support the channel and get cool shirts just like this, head over to paintsocietystore.com. Also, don't forget our Instagram, paint.society. A lot of great information there. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. Let's check it out. <laughs>